You're, oh, that's from the last video. You're back with another one. Uh, this time we got Top 10 Visually Stunning Anime Fights, Volume 7. My Top 10 Anime. So, uh, yeah, let's get into it. This is the seventh volume. Like, that's crazy. Anime is amazing. And visually stunning. Shit it out and use it to smother your fucking girlfriend to death. I really, the demand for gorgeously animated fights is very high. So here is the long awaited volume seven. As mentioned with previous videos, the criteria are purely the quality of animation and not whether the choreography or the fight in general was good or not. If you have any suggestions for an eighth volume, then let me know in the comments below. Hey, that Dragon Ball Super music in the background. CL is only a short six episode anime, but has a charming story. It follows a coming of age boy and a mysterious girl who appears out of nowhere to shake up an otherwise boring town. The boy is tackling many issues associated with growing up and the struggles of his brother leaving abroad. But to add to his plate, he ends up being dragged into a battle that could determine the fate of the universe. It's energetic, fast paced and filled with bizarre mecha action on the surface but hides its simplicity, just like how reality hides behind the busyness and liveliness of life. Some love it and consider it a masterpiece, while others claim it to be a mess. However, both groups would agree that the animation was impressive, especially the over-the-top sequences and battles for a two-decade-old anime. I've never heard of this anime. If you ever wondered what the love child of Dragon Ball Z and Sailor Moon would be, this is it. Flip Flappers is a pretty underrated anime that, if given the chance, will take you on a relatively unpredictable journey. It follows two middle school girls named Papeka and Kokona as they travel to another dimension called Pure Illusion. Their task is to gather wish-granting fragments, but each episode tells its own unusual story that all come together towards the end for a grand conclusion. For a relatively new studio, they did a great job of bringing this magical world to life, filled with energy, capturing everything from fantastical dreamscapes to heated battles to the subtle little gestures that are so often forgotten. This looks like it has like kill a kill type animation. I was not expecting Pokemon to be on here. But I mean, for a show to be going on for 20 years, Pokemon like, Twilight it's gotta be, animation's gotta series step up. Seven episodes, and it does a fantastic job at capturing everyone's heart. These shorts were a breath of fresh air compared to the typical Pokemon TV series, reminding us all the essence of what Pokemon is really all about. The dream of a kid to discover the wonders and mysteries of these strange creatures by embarking on an adventure. The story consists of several unrelated characters that undergo great character development, but are gradually weaved together as the series progresses with a beautiful concluding episode. The animation and art were far superior to the typical TV series, with carefully drawn backgrounds and character designs, adding to the pleasant experience. Too bad the game was hot garbage. It wasn't hot garbage, but I mean, it was, it, it was disappointing. Scissor 7. Is a Pokemon has not hit for me since Diamond and Pearl. I'm gonna be honest. Then it was black and white. It was just a little bit worse. And I was like, I, I mean, shoot. And X and Y was cool. It was like, you know, st it stayed level. And then like, what was after X and Y? Sun and Moon? Garbage. I hated Sun and Moon's story, bro. That was garbage. And then online was, you know, it was, it was cool. But then it was also had a lot of broken stuff. Because like, it was broken. Like there was a lot of broken. Z moves were broken. It was actually pretty bad. I'm not gonna lie. Even though I, I still enjoy Z moves more than I enjoy uh, Dynamax. Because Dynamax was disgustingly broken. That's where I'm getting with Sword and Shield. Disgust. Like, like bro. It was. It, bro. Bro. Me's anime on Netflix. And it's probably the weirdest, but a good show on this list. Even chickens can use Ultra Instincts here. Only in the world of anime can a battle between birds be this epic. Especially thanks to the fantastic animation and choreography. 
This is a fight that takes place very early on in the series, at a chicken farm, where all the chickens are destined to be killed and eaten by humans one day. Dai Bo ends up in the cockfighting ring against the undefeated champ. At first, it may have seemed like a one-sided beatdown, but after a little doping-induced digivolution, even Prominence Burn Plus Ultra was no match against this angry bird. This is actually kind of hilarious how he caught it. He really caught it. But it's hilarious how I was watching uh, last night. I was watching Super Size Me 2. And like those chickens genetically grown to be like gigantic. And then they were having heart attacks and stuff. I just had a flashback when he when, when he's talking about the chickens, uh, the chickens like born to slaughter or whatever. Like I just had a a flashback. Those ch like imagine if they did that to to like you know fighting fighting chickens like bruh. They genetically bred not ge genetically they just like selectively bred them to be big fast like. That's crazy. If they did that with like chickens like to fight, that's they'll have a champion. That's probably what happened here. That's my head cannon right there. That's what happened here. They they genetically bred these chickens to fight. Not to not not to get eaten, but to fight. And then they told them this story about y'all gonna get eaten if you don't fight. And then he was like, I'm not getting eaten, and he started fighting. And then he he beat the unbeaten champion. See? Head cannon right there. That's head cannon. Don't take it serious though, because I have not seen that. I've seen like one so far. Garo the animation already had great animation, so it was no surprise that the movie Divine Flame was equally as great. Garo follows the story of a young knight and father duo, traveling and killing demons possessing humans. This movie is a continuation of the series, taking place four years after the events of the TV series, where Leo has now inherited the mantle of protecting the people from these demons known as horrors. Although this is a continuation, it doesn't necessarily add much to the story. While Divine Flame's narrative is fairly routine, its visuals often surpass the many strengths such as the staggering layout and beautiful wide shot compositions. Action lovers would definitely enjoy this movie. Oh, Violet Evergarden. I haven't seen it, but like, Violet it Evergarden looks pretty. An orphaned young girl, raised as a tool of war. And as a consequence, she not only lost her arms, but also never developed the emotions of a normal human. During her time as a child soldier, she had monstrous strength in combat, capable of killing multiple trained adult soldiers with ease. In fact, her strength and agility were so great that it was one of the fundamental reasons that ended the war. The main story takes place post-war, where she sets off on a journey trying to understand human emotions through her job of writing letters on behalf of others. However, her overall goal is to fully understand the meanings of the words left behind by the one she cared for most. Violet Evergarden actually is sounds like a pretty interesting concept. It's been a while since I've seen a anime with that kind of concept. I don't know if there's... I mean, there's there's anime with that kind of concept, but they're probably like 12, 12 episode anime that I've watched... And I was like, oh, that was a good experience. And then I just, like, over time, I just forgot about. So, but Violet Evergarden, shoot, I don't even know how many episodes that is. Let me see. Let me just look that up real quick. Let me see. I think it's on Funimation. Let me just check. Quick, Violet, Violet Evergarden right there. That's my cue. Um, yo, Funimation, if you could load, that would be very nice. Oh, this is a movie. Shoo, I might as well do do uh do a movie review on this. Oh, wait, no, it's just not on here, I don't think. I don't know. Whatever. I'm over here trying to rush because <laughs> I'm not trying to spend too much time. But which 
Which would y'all think it say is a better story? That uh, was it, Mashoku Tensai, I think it was called. What time am I at? 727. Yeah, Mashoku Tensai or Slime. Tommy got reincarnated to a slime, which I like to call Slimy Slash Slime. Slithery Slime Slime. Slimy Mix Slime Slime. Which y'all think is better? Slash Slime or Mashoku Tensai? Oh, they AI? This anime was a true hidden gem of 2021 and unbelievably underrated. The story revolves around a singing AI with the aim of making everyone happy with her songs. You get him pushed AI around. Theme. However, things change with the arrival of a time traveling AI attempting to prevent a war between humans and AI in the future. This anime has a great story, well developed characters, and cinematic level animation for. I'm good on time traveling for a very long time. You know, like, I've, I've hit my time traveling thing with Steins Gate. I'm like, I'm good, bro. I'm good for a while. Because I still got season two to watch. So I was like, nah, bro, I'm, I'm good. I'm good. I'm a, I'm a, you know. Every episode. The fights don't just have great visuals, but amazing hand-to-hand -hand combat and choreography. An amazing advantage that animation has over live action is that you can make characters move in ways unimaginable in real life, especially in hand-to-hand -hand combat scenes. And this show is a prime example of how to fully capitalize on this advantage. It's crazy because you think they do more hand-to-hand -hand combat, but no, that's a lot of powers. A legend tells that a long time ago, monsters could give the ability to certain elected officials to master the five elements. This is a battle between the fire and ice envoy. Fog Hills of Five Elements is a Chinese anime with fantastic visuals. This is a short sequence that was released before the three episode anime, but it was more than sufficient to capture many people's attention. Okay, he just said yum. Very different from the typical <laughs> Japanese ain't anime we're used to, but nevertheless, the choreography and animation of this fight was definitely god tier. The fourth episode is in production, and based on the trailer, we're in for another treat of epic action. I mean, bro, when he literally stood there and looked at you while you were throwing your heart your biggest attack, I would have been like, you know, I'm gonna I'm just go. I'm a, <laughs> like, I'm not beating you. I'm gonna go, dog. It's fine. You know, it's whatever. You don't make anything, you don't live. You just eat and hide. Is there a point to this? Are you dictating your fucking obituary to me, Belmont? Castlevania had already delivered badass, some though. visually stunning fights in the past, and this epic confrontation between Belmont and Death was from the latest season. This final boss is probably one of the sassiest villains, delivering some of the greatest lines to lighten up a death battle. I'm going to eat your soul. Shit it out and use it to smother your fucking girlfriend to death. This is what happens when an ancient force of nature mingles too long with society. Trevor, on the other hand, was a pure badass to take on death, without an ounce of fear despite his slim chances of victory. The overall battle was beautifully captured with fluid camera movement, especially the smooth transitions between scenes reminiscent of the game cutscenes. Overall, an epic encounter. In conclusion to a great adaptation. I was about to say, he's getting hit with that. He, There's no way he can see that. His right eye closed? Nah, he getting slapped up with that. If you enjoyed that. I did enjoy that. I did enjoy that. And I already hit the that like button right there. Like, y'all should do. Y'all should also do that. Or, or, let me go back to... Actually, someone probably put them all in the comments by now. Nope. What about here? I was hoping they'd have the timestamp. Okay. Well, uh, the Mashoku Tensei one, it, like, I said it looked like, it looked like, uh, Promise Neverland, but, like, Slithery Slime Schlatt looked like Black Clover style. That's what makes me kind of, kind of wary to watch it, because Black Clover, it's cool, 
but the animation lacks sometimes. Like they they skip frames. It's it just looks kind of choppy sometimes. That's the thing that's holding me back from Slithery Slime Schlatt. And uh, Mashoku Tensei looks really good, but I don't know anything about the story. So like, which which would y'all which would y'all like recommend first, Slithery Slime Schlatt or Mashoku Tensei? And I hope y'all enjoy. Like, comment, subscribe. I'm out. Peace.